Good day, fellow investors. We continue with our series on big investing mistakes that cost you a lot of money. Last time we discussed anchoring and today we're going to discuss timing the market, which is one of the biggest mistakes many, many of you out there make. People simply get crazy, start thinking about the market, not about what they own. And I get all these kinds of questions. When should I sell my portfolio? Should I do this? Should I do that? And in this video, I hope to give you an answer on what you should do with your investments. We'll discuss the S&P 500, the market timing strategy and the investing strategy for the S&P 500. If you get value from this, smash that like button and consider subscribing if you haven't. Of course, everyone's focus is on the market, which is wrong. If I make a crash video, it gets immediately 100,000 views. That's insane because people are focused on these crashes timing the market which is wrong because you can never know what the market will do. And this is another great comment here. So I started investing a couple of months back, but I'm hesitant to buy into great businesses because the market is tried trading on an all time high after a decade of loose monetary policy. So will the banks be able to cushion another market crash? Just started investing a few months ago understanding completely great businesses and on top of that also understanding the macroeconomics what will the fed do how all those things work so or augustus you are a great genius or you really need this market timing video because if you look at the market the market goes up and down up and down up and down but if you start timing it then your focus is wrong there have been people that have sold here and do you think they buy here? No, they don't. They don't buy in a crash because they still think, oh, this will get worse, worse and worse. And then just a little bit later, things return to normal. And then again, the market timing trick starts. 2012, the, there were US debt issues, Europe was a mess, and everybody was projecting a crash. And there were crashes of 15, 19%, I think. What happened afterwards? Of course, market timers never bought. And afterwards, the market exploded 211%. That's really, really insane. But at each moment in time, you can wait for a correction. You can wait for this. And that's a game that you might win sometimes, but over the long term, you'll miss on time in the market and not timing in the market because that's what gives the returns. In 2012, there were hikes expected that would crash the market. Now we have inflation and then again, hikes expected that will crash the market. We don't know what the Fed will do. It's impossible to know, will they let inflation loose? So the market might even double before you know it. So. It's not about timing the market. That's impossible to do. What you have to do is focus on what you own. And let's see what does it mean to own the S&P 500. If you look at the price earnings ratio of the S&P 500, of course, now it's a little bit skewed because of COVID, but let's take the average for 2021. Price earnings ratio will likely be 20. If I go and value the S&P 500 as a business, price earnings ratio of 22, gives me an earnings yield of 4.54%. So you buy the best businesses out there, American businesses, you get 4% business yield. What is that the businesses earn, the money the businesses make? And that is investing, focusing on what the business earns. Future growth, 2, 3% in line with economic growth. So add that up and you are to likely get 7% long-term from the S&P 500. But you might say, Sven, yes, the S&P 500 is at all-time highs, crashes, yeah, blah, 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 blah. The S&P 500 was in a bubble in the 2000s. Look at the returns over time. So 187% in total. If we put this into an annual perspective, that's 7.5% over the last 20 years from the last bubble. That's exactly in line with my 7% yearly long-term projections. But there are always market timers. And if you look at 
the average investor return over the last 20 years was just below 3%. So compared to 7.5% for the market. How is that possible? The market does 7.5%, the average invest investor 3%. Because the average investor thinks he's smarter and he goes and times the market. He doesn't focus on owning the market. I have had many discussions with many investors. You will never hear that online because nobody likes to talk about these things. So I have had a friend that discussed how he sold everything in November of 2008, his complete pension portfolio and everything, because he thought that it will be disaster ahead. When did he buy back he started slowly, slowly investing again in 2015. Of course, the biggest part of the gains he already missed because he was focused on market timing, not on value. This was the time to buy everything because it was cheap. Now it is a little bit more expensive, but then again, you have to see what you are buying and what is the expected return. And for that, you need to have a good strategy. If the S&P 500 crashes 50%, what would you do? Then the return goes from 7% to 14%. Everybody would start selling in panic. It could crash more. But real buyers, real investors, oh great, I can buy something that I already like for half the price. Imagine that. That's insanity, but that's how the market beast works. People sell at the wrong point in time and buy at the wrong point in time or double down. So you have to see, okay, 7%, how do I feel with that? Am I okay? Am I not okay? If you're okay with that, and if you can sustain crashes, then that's investing. If it goes up, well, it went up and you did well. Further, on the market, the risk of timing the market. If you look at the Argentinian stock market with huge inflation, the index was 526 points in 2000 and now is 65,000 points. I think if we calculate it for the 97% peso drop, it still is performing similarly to the S&P 500. But this is the protection that, at least some protection that owning businesses gives. If you wait for a correction and this happens, which we discussed in the video that can happen, then you're in trouble. So the key is to really know what you're investing in, likely earnings, S&P 500, 180, 200 points, 4%, 3, 4, 5% yield. You have to see how this fits you over the long term. And you have to find the vehicles that will lead to your investment goals through business ownership, through earnings, not through timing the market. Even if you make 50% of your money by timing it once, you will likely lose it when you time it again next time. And that's the big risk. For now, for the S&P 500, 7% with possible drops of 50% is a little bit too risky for me. I prefer other things. If you want to check what I do, check my stock market research platform overview. If you like the perspective of investing, there are plenty more educational videos on this channel. So smash that like button and I'll see you in the next video.